In a recent video, I talked about the uniqueness of the wooden wild mouse model, particularly those by Australian duo Ted Hopkins and Dick Pearce. It was brought to my attention that not all of the information in that video was correct, and I quickly realized that there was a lot more to the story of Australia's wild mice than I realized. So this is a shortened documentary style video on the story of three identical rides that are stalwarts of the Australian amusement industry, the Hopkins and Pearce wooden wild mouse coasters. First, to correct the record from my previous video on defunct coasters. There were four wooden wild mouse coasters that operated in Australia, and three of them were built by Hopkins and Pierce. The other was imported directly from the United States. Now, according to RCDB, the now defunct wild mouse at Aussie World was one of those three, but it appears that RCDB is actually incorrect on this matter. And closer inspection of the car design and various small differences make that much clearer. Thank you very much to the commenter who pointed out that inaccuracy. But what is so special about the Hopkins and Pierce wooden wild mouse? To tell that story, we have to tell part of the story of German manufacturer Mark Rides. The first wooden wild mouse was at the UK's Clarence Pier in 1951, but they gained popularity throughout the 1950s thanks to Europa Park founder and former Mark Rides owner and operator Franz Mark. After he launched his first model in 1957, the ride was an immediate hit and licenses to build the design were snatched up around the world. In particular, several were built in the United States, including one that would operate at the Seattle World's Fair in 1962. In attendance at that fair was a very important figure in the Australian amusement industry, Ted Hopkins, then the general manager of Luna Park, Sydney. Ted Hopkins was born in Tasmania in 1902, and after some involvement with Luna Park Glenelg, he moved to North Sydney to get involved with the mechanical and electrical installation of the ride equipment when it was moved to the newly established Luna Park Sydney in 1935. He would ultimately manage the park until his retirement in 1970. Along with his business partner Dick Pearce, Hopkins decided to negotiate for the license to build the ride in Australia. After being ultimately successful, Hopkins and Pearce opted to build three of the rides to minimise their costs building one at their very own Luna Park, while selling the other two models to a showman named Green. Also to reduce their costs, Hopkins and Pierce renamed their model to the Mad Mouse, which interestingly enough is still what the ride is referred to as on the control panel at Luna Park. But the Luna Park model would still operate under the name Wild Mouse. The first of the three Wild Mouse coasters and the original of the three built by Hopkins and Pierce operated in between Luna Park Sydney and the Sydney showgrounds at Moore Park for the majority of its life. It would do so until finding its permanent home at Luna Park in 1995 during one of the park's major redevelopments. It is the only one of the three Hopkins and Pierce models to remain on Australian shores. The ride became part of a heritage order during the redevelopment of the park and the ride is now protected by legislation. Any operator of Luna Park Sydney is obligated by law to operate the ride and to maintain it to its original blueprints, with only minor changes being approved for the purposes of maintenance and keeping the ride up to date with modern safety standards. The second model operated under Whittings Loan, now known as Amusements Australia, at the Melbourne showgrounds under the name Mad Mouse. It would only operate for 10 days every year for the duration of the Royal Melbourne Show until it was eventually removed in 2003 following 50 years of operation at the show. After being removed, it was sold to a park in Indonesia called Batu Night Spectacular in East Java. There it operated from 2008 to 2011 before again relocating to another Indonesian park, Jawa Timur Park 2, also in East Java. There it still operates today as Animal Coaster and features different animals painted on its unmistakable Hopkins and Pierce cars. The third and final Hopkins and Pierce Wild Mouse operated at the Adelaide Showgrounds under Bob Lawrence, in similar circumstances to the Melbourne model. The Adelaide model continued to operate for slightly longer than the Melbourne model, being removed in 2007. It also found its way to Indonesia. Today it operates at a park in Indonesia called Wisata Bahari Lamongan in East Java under the name Crazy Car Coaster, with perhaps even more unique car designs. So what about the Aussie World model? Where did it even come from? 
Well, while RCDB lists it as a Hopkins and Pierce model and the layout is essentially identical, there are differences that tip you off to the fact that this is the same ride model but built by someone else. It was actually imported from the United States, operating at the Perth Royal Showgrounds from 1962 until sometime in the 1990s. Unfortunately, this is the only version of the ride model that no longer exists. After moving to Aussie World on the Sunshine Coast in 2000, it operated until 2016 when it was unceremoniously removed and demolished. While it isn't built by an Aussie manufacturer, it certainly is still sad to see a piece of Australia's amusement heritage demolished and turned to scrap. There is no denying the significance of these rides in Australian history, and their ride experience is particularly unique as well. Great airtime and laterals, and a fantastic, albeit rough, ride. They have thrilled generations, and frankly, it's very impressive that all three still operate. And that fact is what makes them most unique of all. These three remaining Wild Mouse models are unique in the fact that they are the only remaining wooden Wild Mouse coasters on record in the world. They have outlived some famous coasters, including those at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and many parks across the United States. I'd love to hear all your memories of this wonderfully unique ride model, whether you rode them at the original showgrounds or at their current locations. Let me know what you remember of them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next video.